So we left off looking at the life cycle of a jellyfish. So um, just to kind of recap a little bit, so members of class Scyphozoa are medusa as adults, and that's the jellyfish shape, um, but they have a sessile stage. They are a polyp as juveniles. So um, just to kind of go through this one more time. So here's the adult medusa. Um, egg and sperm are released from males and females into the water where fertilization takes place. So it takes place in the water. Um, the blastula develops from the fertilized embryo egg, excuse me, and then forms into an embryo known as a planula. So the planula is like a little embryo. It will settle onto some form of rock or sediment somewhere and grow into a polyp. And then that polyp will start to release medusae. So it will release just like one after the other. It just starts punching off these young medusae that become adults. So that's the life cycle. Um, distinct from the hydrozoa life cycle. So the hydrozoas, or the hydras as they're called, um, these guys have a medusa stage as juveniles, but as adults they're a polyp. So it's kind of the opposite of the jellyfish. But similar concept. Um, fertilization occurs in the water. There's a planula that will settle and then it'll grow into an adult. Okay, so um, anthozoans, so this is your um, uh, anemones or corals, can actually undergo an asexual type of reproduction that kind of dominates. So think of what it looks like when um, we saw a bacterial cell undergoing binary fission and splitting from one into two. Um, that's actually what these whole anemones will do. So they will undergo fission and split from one into two. And um, there's a process called pedal laceration. So um, the word pedal or ped refers to foot. So um, the bottom part of the anthozoan has this little pedal disc, and that's what splits in two, and that begins the process of them dividing. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So here's kind of a schematic of what it would look like. So you have an original, starts to pull apart a little bit, and then fissures off completely. Um, this is really common among corals, because again, corals actually, they, the difference is corals will stay connected, um, but they're colonies of lots of these polyps that will stay connected. And um, they are genetically pretty similar, as you can imagine, because when they do this, um, this um, process of fission, they're basically cloning themselves. So there's not much genetic variety from doing this process. So um, anemones can do both. Anemones and corals also will release gametes into the water that undergo fertilization. So they don't exclusively reproduce asexually. They also undergo sexual reproduction. So for them, so here's some coral and um, they will basically release their gametes into the water and the gametes will fertilize just like they did with the other two classes same thing develop into a blastula and then a little planula and that planula will settle down and bud into one polyp and then after that is when that polyp might start undergoing uh, budding and develop into more than one and and will grow a colony so that's basically how anthozoans reproduce. It's pretty much the same, but then they have this extra step where they bud and clone themselves into large colonies. So a couple things about um, cnidarians before we finish up. They have a big ecological role. Um, they are predators and prey. So they can be eaten by, say, um, uh, sea turtles. Sea turtles are huge fans of eating jellyfish, which you might have heard of before. Um, they can actually tolerate the sting but one might say they just really like spicy food. Um, but also, jellyfish can be predators, so they can catch and eat fish and anything that can get caught in their tentacles. Now, corals have a huge e ecological importance. Um, corals make colonies that basically make up the largest living things on Earth in the sense that you can see them from space. So here's a coral reef. So this is one of the part of the Great Barrier Reef, and coral reefs um, are extremely important um, for the coastline development. So the coastline, um, instead of getting hammered by waves, the presence of the coral reef will slow down any wave action, um, which you might remember from last semester we learned about that when we talked about coastlines. Um, it will basically stop and act like a buffer. So it'll keep the waves um, from getting too powerful and wiping away the sediment of the coastline. So that's a really big um, role is that they're a buffer. They're also a huge habitat, so lots and lots of organisms live in coral reefs, um, not just in their juvenile stage, but also in their adult stage. You'll see fish, you'll see invertebrates, um, a lot of things grow on coral, so they're really important in that sense. 
Um, so we're going to look at one more group of organisms that you might confuse with jellyfish, but they are not. Um, they're not technically cnidarians. Tenophores are actually in their own phylum altogether. And um, there might even be some debate as to whether or not they can even be considered animals. They might be in a different kingdom altogether as well. But you might have seen these at aquariums. Um, these are called comb jellies. And comb jellies are planktonic, um, so they drift in the water as well. They're almost transparent. And um, they might look like jellyfish, but they're, they have some important distinctions. Um, these guys have a series of canals or sheaths that run along their body and that give them some structure and rigidity. And so that's what you see here, almost like ribs, which they kind of call them ribs. Um, so those comb plates also assist with motion. They're covered with cilia, which are, again, like little tiny hairs that help them to move through the water. Um, these guys are actually genetically so distinct from jellyfish that they're not even remotely close to each other, which is kind of interesting. Um, you might see the ones that light up. So some of them actually have some phosphorescence to them. So they will illuminate. Um, some of them bioluminesce as well. So they will emit their own light that's given off actually by a type of bacteria that lives in their tissue. So I just wanted to bring them up, even though they're not part of phylum cnidaria, um, just to make the distinction that even though they're called comb jellies and you look at them and you think it's a type of jellyfish, um, they're actually not. They're actually very distinct. Okay, so that summarizes phylum cnidaria.